when this when this accident and this tragedy took place, um, you know, a lot of us w were really saddened and sickened by it, right? And we we wanted to also wanted to get involved somehow, and this was an opportunity for us to get involved, and and that's what we were excited about to actually get down into the Gulf and be there every day and see what's happening. In, in this area because you hear different things in the media it's not as bad as it seems or you know maybe the federal government's trying to cover things up so by being doing research down there we're, we're, we're actually right at the epicenter where the oil spill took place so we're going to be able to see wildlife you know from beautiful spoonbills pelicans you know American alligators uh, in addition to loons you know, you know uh, ibises egrets you know uh, this this Louisiana Delta is rich in wildlife, so you know people interested in this project are getting an opportunity to see this wildlife and see the impact for themselves. In some cases, BP has been trying to clean up this area, and then people are going to be able to see this for themselves. You you hear in the media about these tar balls that maybe are washing up on shore. Will, will people will, will be able to see that? Uh, is there still any oil slicks on the surface? Well, you'll be able to see that. You know, we'll be there. Uh, and it's interesting, this part of the, of the bay, also there's dolphins. So every time, literally, I went out on the boat, you know, we, we'd see dolphins at some point. So uh, I, that's pretty exciting. Still, even though I'm an ornithologist, you know, and I love birds, I, I think there's, we all have soft spots for cetaceans, you know, and something like this for dolphins. So this is a chance for someone to get actively involved and see for themselves what's happening. And at the same time, contribute some aspect to this research that I'm trying to get at, which one of the one of the things when you think about it is that there's a lot of petroleum in the area. So that petroleum ultimately is going to work its way into the food chain. How is that going to be detected by loons, for example? How is that going to get picked up? So but for us, handling loons, taking their blood, for example, we can actually measure petroleum levels in the blood you know, in these animals, and we'll know whether they're stressed or not. So that's one of the things that I'm concerned about, and we won't be able to get that information by just observing. You know, that's where we're gonna have to actually go out at night and catch these birds. And again, if I was a, you know, someone out there wanting to get involved, you know, to be able to handle a wild loon, put that on your lap, what a great experience. I, I still remember the first loon I caught, uh, and handling this bird uh, it was just such a wonderful, wonderful experience. So, you know, I want to provide that experience for other people as well. So, the other thing I, I thought about too is they also use lots of dispersants down there. Well, these dispersants are, many of them are carcinogenic, that they're toxic. Uh, phytoplankton, the base of the food chain, is impacted by these dispersants. And then fish, you know, feed on these dispersants or feed on some of the plankton that's there that the dispersants would have impacted. And loons feed on these fish. So, so what might happen uh, into this whole food web in which loons are an integral part of? And we won't know until we're down there investigating. So that's one of the other aspects of the research I'm excited about because in like a lot of good science projects, it's probably going to generate more questions and we don't know the answers going into them. So that's the exciting part.